Hello everyone, you are all very welcome to our second Link and Learn webinar of 2024, which actually sold out pretty much immediately. So this is proving a very popular topic. My name is Dave Farley, Head of Membership Services at Learnovate, and I have the pleasure of being your host today. Before we go into today's topic, I would like to remind you of a couple of tools to ensure this event is as inclusive and collaborative as possible. Please use the option to add subtitles if required. Simply click the CC button at the bottom of your screen. You can ask questions in the chat on the right hand side and my Learnabate colleagues as well as our speakers are available to have a conversation. We are also running a poll if you would like to participate which asks the question, how important is sustainability in your organisation? Today, we are going straight into our keynote with Mark Kelly, the founder of AI Ireland and an all-round AI guru. Welcome, Mark. Thank you very much, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here. And I know we've got different people from around the world um, as well. So I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. Um, in the next 20 minutes or so, my goal is to tell you a little bit about AI, the current state of play, how it's being used in, in education, and then also from a sustainability perspective, things that we need to be mindful for is, uh, as well. So I'm hoping that the presentation you find is, is helpful, practical, and also if you have questions, we will be able to answer those uh, too. So without further ado, we'll, we'll start off the presentation. And we'll go to our first slide. So I've been in this world of AI for since 2018, and I wear two hats. The first hat is I'm Chief Customer Officer and Co-Founder of a company called Aldis, and we're a specialist staffing AI recruitment company. So we've got offices in Ireland, US, and Scotland, and we have companies hire data scientists, machine learning engineers, and I do executive search in AI day to day. The other hat that I wear is founder of Artificial Intelligence Ireland, and I founded this company in 2018, and we showcase how AI is used on the island of Ireland. And since then, I've interviewed over 600 leaders within AI on the record, and they talk about how they're using AI to have an impact or solve a business problem or add positive change and have a social impact as well. I'm the author of two books, AI Essentials, and AI, set, AI, AI Unleashed. And in the AI Unleashed, I talk about how you can get started with AI and introduce it to your business. There's 27 chapters with really specific use cases that are very, very easy to manage. And AI Essentials, it's, it's kind of like an idiot's guide to AI for business. It's 100 questions asked and answered with a practical example, A to Z glossary in, in the use case. And um, tell you a little bit about more AI Ireland in our next slide. We have, again, for international uh, people, as well as people based in Ireland, we've got over 150 episodes of how AI is used on the island of Ireland. We've got over 300 AI blog posts to talk about what AI is right through to use cases. And then we've got a variety of different uh, videos and courses for people to actually take. And then we have on the next slide, the AI awards. Each year in November, we showcase on the island of Ireland companies big and small about how they're actually using AI for, for good. And we've had over 500 applications of these AI applications that I've read myself. And what makes our event uh, really good, which is going to be a, a live actually online this year on the 26th of November, is that people that present, they have a short video that showcases who they are, what the problem is that they've solved, how they've used AI to do it, and then most importantly, the impact. In our next slide, I'll tell you a little bit more about, from an Irish perspective, about some of how AI is important and how we've got our fingerprints on that. There's a gentleman there, I start off as a person called George Bull, and George Bull came over from the UK, and he was our first mathematician uh, professor at Queen's University, which would now be uh, seen as University College Cork, and the work that he has done was the foundation for, for computer logic. This gentleman beside him was a person called Alan Turing. You may remember Alan because Alan, 
uh, work was very, very important because him and his team cracked the Enigma code, which ended the Second World War. And he would be seen as probably the father of artificial intelligence. And he created a, a, t- a, t- a, t- a tool called the Turing test, which, which was criterion to use to judge if you're dealing with some type of artificial intelligence as well. Steve Jobs did a hat tip to Alan because unfortunately Alan died swallowing an apple. And if you ever see the Apple logo, there's a bite mark taken out of it. The gentleman beside him is a person called John McCarthy. John McCarthy's dad came from Cremone and he coined the term artificial intelligence in 1956. And his work is still a foundation for where we are today. And Jeffrey Hinton is open to recently the, uh, leading the Google AI research team. And he is the nephew of uh, George Bill. On our next slide, I'm going to tell you about some of the companies that I've interviewed. There's a bit of an idea to give a bit of a flavor of some of those companies, big, big and small. Uh, and our next slide, I'll tell you a little bit more about what AI is. From the 600 le- leaders I interview, everyone's got a different opinion on it. And actually, very few people agree what AI is. I personally like this explanation. It, it's, quite, it's quite straightforward. But if you caught me on a different day, I might give you a different perspective of that. And uh, next. When you think about AI, it's it's actually all around us. So if you're using LinkedIn or Twitter or TikTok, every type of feed that you get is personalized to you. So you'll only see certain parts of that and because that's because it's an algorithm. And ultimately what AI is for the most part is personalization done really well. So if you're making your purchase on Amazon or Zalando or one of these applications, it's going to know you, it's going to track your cookies, previous buying history, your demographic. And this is the same with Netflix where we've got a recommendation engine that gives you a specific viewing history Op- options for you to actually like different shows and actually give your opinion, which means you get a more of a personalized service um, as, as well. In our next slide, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how ChatGPT completely changed the game. So in November 2022, OpenAI introduced ChatGPT to the world, and it was incredible. Uh, over 100 million people subscribed, logged in uh, within less than eight weeks. So suddenly people had access to doing using AI for a variety of different case studies. And this has just brought the markets, just it's gone bananas. And uh, you see in my next slide here, we have the adoption and the earnings calls where people are talking from a C-suite about how AI is so important to what they're doing in their business. Nearly every company now has to have an AI strategy. Now, your AI strategy may not be to use AI, but you still need to know what your competitors are using, how they're approaching it, and how you can actually potentially apply it to your business too. In my next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit more now about AI in the education market. So when we actually look at the end of 2021, 2022, AI in education was recognized as a $4 billion industry. If we actually look at the projections coming up now in the future, it's going to be over 30 billion. So there's a lot of investment going into this, going into this area. Uh, next, we can see that when we think about education, and how AI plays a part, there's a variety of different ways to do it. There's a lot of my family members, my wife is a a teacher, so I get to see firsthand how work that goes involved in terms of preparing for classes, doing the lesson plans, involved homework, all those different things. And it's really, really uh, encompassing. And for for me, I'm just in in awe for anyone who's actually in that kind of educational uh, sphere. When you think about some of the three most important areas with AI in, in, in education, which I'm going to go to a little bit more detail, is optimizing resources, tailored learning experiences, and then facilitating remote education. And next, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about that. So what AI does particularly well within education is having a kind of a personalized path for each student. So depending on their ability levels and making sure that they aren't left behind. So one of the the, the applications I quite like is some of the ones that my son might use. So my son has dyslexia and how he engages, um, you know, is completely different way of way of, I suppose, learning to, to my other sons. And some of these tools, you can train them 
in terms of giving them additional context. And then when they're actually teaching maths or they're teaching uh, English, for example, they take that into consideration when they're actually doing those different lessons. From the other side is that when you have from predictive analytics, you can look and look at people's uh, history in terms of are they still using the tools? Are they still attending colleges, colleges, for example? And they can start to spot people that are maybe missing certain classes, not handing in their homework, or, or example, or less responsive to logging in. And they can actually help prevent those people falling out of college, or actually maybe there could be a bigger issue uh, that's there. And then a resource optimizations, AI is particularly very good at managing resources, allocations, and then integrating in from a sustainability perspective, which I'll go through in a little bit more detail on the next slide. So from a from one of the as I said at the start of the presentation, one of the, the benefits of being the AI Ireland founder is I get to see so many different applications of AI in Ireland, but also my role as all this. I get to see some of the most exciting AI applications in, in North America and Europe. Uh, in this example for Galvia AI, I had a podcast episode with John Clancy, and they were finalists for our AI awards in Startup. And they created a tool called Cara, which helps reduce workload by 40%, saving 1,500 hours in the university that it was applied to. And it came up with 84% of student queries were actually instantly resolved. And it does this in a variety of ways. In the next slide, I'll, I'll tell you about that. So personalized learning. So it gets to understand the type of student that it's engaging with. So again, the content is very, very specific. Automated assessment. So the grading and feedback is, is, is within a very, very short time frame. And then predictive analytics, so kind of similar to what I'd said there before. It's identifying at-risk students early and making sure that we can flag them and give them more preference to ensure that they can complete the, 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 the uh, education program. And then it's enhanced content creation. So AI-generated interactive materials materials. These could be like quizzes, for example. And then you've got real-time chatbots that are trained very specifically on the context of you know thousands, tens of thousands of similar types of questions and similar types of phraseology. So it can respond back in a very, very nuanced way. And uh, next, we'll talk about Duolingo. So I'm guessing most people on this call would have had some type of experience with Duolingo over their years and we're the same in our family uh, we use the lingo which i'm going to tell you a little bit about now next so how Duolingo works is it uses these tools called adaptive learning algorithms nlp speech recognition automated translation test and predictive modeling so what that really kind of works out to is next so my son he he want, he was low he was probably in the top kind of lowest 10 percent in his class in school he's 10 and he's learning irish and he was just very 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 weak at it and the teacher gave him the example gave him the idea of downloading the app duolingo and he's done over 100 days of using this app for 15 minutes each evening to learn and i've seen firsthand how he's got more excited about engaging with the tool, how he's got more excited with the Irish terms that he's speaking. And he's now gone into the top 25% in proficiency. For me, what's so exciting about that was the self-esteem boost that he actually got from, from doing it. He loves speaking Irish. Any example he can get, he can do that. Now, for people that don't necessarily know, in Ireland, the majority of people, not majority, vast majority will speak English and only in certain areas will, will people actually speak Irish. Now, my wife is, is an Irish teacher, so I would try to, to have a few, couple of words, but he still was uh, uh, you know, weak compared to that. But this has been an absolute game changer. So how it does, it does it is, is it can tell when he's actually filling in or answering questions, one's questions that he, do, he gets right or wrong, and the ones that maybe he's, he's struggling with, it notices the gaps there and comes up with different unique ways to ask the same question or gamification, but also has these different types of sound and personalities like Oscar that come on and kind of make it engaging. So if, for example, he hasn't, um, he hasn't done his lesson this day, there'll be a little kind of uh, notification sent to my phone to, as a reminder to me to let him know. 
and then we have them for 15 minutes on it and then we we, we stop it off after that and um, in the next slide Khan Academy is another great example of personalized learning 120 million yearly learners 7.7 billion learning minutes last year and there was 190 countries and 56 languages that have utilized this we've got a short video that we want to play on this too if we if we can we had two algebra classes and i i used one for uh, like completely khan academy i want you guys to watch the videos do all the quizzes homework tests and we're going to see how it is and the other class i taught from the front and did my traditional lesson plans like that and it was pretty evident by Christmas that the kids that were able to, you know, that I was able to move around and not teach from the front, those kids were advancing more. Kids that just spent 20 minutes a day averaged an 80% or above. The academy like helped me and everything I practiced on Khan was on the test. So really, if you want to pass, do your Khan. Even if you don't want to, get those 30 minutes up because you will pass, like, trust me. I really worked hard, so, yeah. So thank you, Khan Academy, you guys, for providing the tools that I needed to pass. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, next. And uh, next. So if you're an education company or you're thinking about introducing these two uh, uh, tools, I'd re uh, reach out to companies that are using AI and just send them a message because they're looking for case studies and they'll be very open to it. Uh, next slide. So one of the challenges with AI is that it actually can cause an awful lot of energy consumption on water, electricity. Next slide. And the, that gentleman there was a gentleman called Jensen Hong, who's the co-founder of NVIDIA. And he works at driving through the design of the chips that power AI. TSMC in Taiwan manufactures them, but they use the vast majority of electricity and water supply when they're doing it. So there's an awful big trade off. And uh, next. So some of the challenges when you have this is to make sure that the large scale models that we're actually working on, that we conscious that when you're using ChatGPT or any different different types of things, it can cost an awful lot of resources. So these are used large language models. So we really feel that probably the future is these things called small language models, which are more context specific and more focused around the, the industry so where people can actually learn and build better nuances. So I feel that although large language models are particularly in vogue at the moment and there's benefits on them, there's better ways to do this and conscious, just be conscious that when you are using them. Uh, next. City of San Francisco is a lovely example of being able to use a smart grid very effectively and try to optimize how they're using uh, their different types of resources by using AI to design and give better perspectives on how they can approach it. They're able to reduce power wastage and lower carbon emissions. And next slide. And then paperless office XYZ had a completely different culture where they said, here's our drivers. We're going to get net zero. We want to try uh, to do this across our organization. And they went on a mission to actually use AI to come up with a variety of different ways, how they could eliminate paper usage and optimize how they do these things. And uh, next slide. So my tips would be awareness and understanding. So educate the stakeholders you're working try to overcome resistance by confronting it and try to see what the challenges are up front. Understand that you only have certain constraints, so you have to prioritize effectively. And when you're doing your goals, be very, very clear on those goals. But most importantly, if you don't foster collaboration, it won't be a success. Uh, next. If you're interested in learning about more AI, about how you can do training uh, online uh, or having kind of, kind of that remote setting, uh, we've got a variety of different training options available for you. If you go to the next slide, we do training in, in terms of gener generative AI and EU AI Act. We also do executive coaching and a variety of different uh, bespoke courses. The next slide, the EU AI Act is coming down the, in the next uh, couple of years that might seem far away but this impact is going to be coming from May and this is about if you're using AI product or a service 
you need to abide by these this regulation and regulation is it's coming across the world now in different forms so it's important to stay ahead of that next slide if you're interested in finding out more about the EU AI Act and you're thinking about going on the journey of getting into AI into business, I'd recommend you understanding from a regulatory perspective what your needs will have to be before you start to introduce the AI products and services to the company that you're working for, but also for your customers. Uh, next. If anybody would like to reach out to me or follow up or have any questions, I'd be absolute pleasure to follow up a little bit more details uh, with you. And uh, it was an honor to speak with you today. And thank you very much for your time. And Dave and Louise, thank you very much for putting this together.